Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, on my home base, uh, St. Stephen Baptist Church, uh, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master. Thank you for joining us. And we continue our thought that we began on Monday, and that is the secrets of a champion. And we discovered that Jesus is the champion, not a champion. He's the champion. In fact, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion. And we're talking about all week, how do you become a champion? Because when you were born again, you were born to win. And by champion, I mean simply fulfilling the purposes God has for your life. Experiencing victory. You know, whenever you set out to do something, you know, you want to be able to say, like Jesus said at the end of his life, telelestai, or it is finished. I completed it. I did it. And God wants you to have that type of, of victory, but it takes the championship mentality. So we've been looking all week at what it means to be a champion, what, what champions do, the, the mindset of a champion, the heart of a champion. And let's continue this thought by actually looking at what the scripture says uh, in Hebrews chapter 12. And the first thing it, it teaches us is this. If we actually look at the verses and impact the verses, and then is this. And that is, if you want to be a champion, learn from those who went before you. Verse 1 says this. Verse 1 says, uh, learn before those who went before you. Verse 1 says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith. Whenever you see the word therefore in a verse, always ask yourself the question, why is the therefore therefore? Well, the therefore is therefore because verse 1 of chapter 12 connects chapter 11. And in the preceding chapter, the writer of Hebrews talks about people in our faith, especially in the Old Testament, primarily in the Old Testament, who were champions. And they became champions by faith. What is unique about these champions is that they were ordinary people. They were not extraordinary people, but they became champions by faith. And what this writer is saying is go back and learn from them in the past and see how they were able to become champions. Whenever you see champions, you, you will discover that those champions always uh, study champions in their particular discipline or their particular area. For example, if you're a boxer, I guarantee you that all of the boxers who are champions, their managers taught them about champions in the past, like Muhammad Ali or Sugar Ray Leonard or Lennox Lewis or Mike Tyson even. They know something about the great champions of the past because the past, the champions of the past help to inspire us today. And the reason that therefore is therefore is because there are some champions who were Old Testament champions in the Old Testament who inspire us today. For example, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 4 says something about Abel. It said it was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God. So when you read the story of Abel, who was killed by his brother Cain because of jealousy, well, it helps the champion by saying, you know what, Abel was hurt by people who was very close to him, namely his brother Cain. So I can be a champion because even though Abel was hurt, he endured, he became a champion. He's in the Hall of Fame chapter. and It's really a Hall of Faith chapter in the 11th chapter of Hebrews. So I'm going to be inspired because Abel was hurt by his brother and he still remains a champion and so can I. Or take, for example, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. It talks about Enoch. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. Now, Enoch was a person who walked with God. Uh, he didn't mind being different. So whenever you're a champion, sometimes you have to be willing to be different. And sometimes you will experience alienation and ostracism. But when I read about Enoch, I get inspired by those who went before me because these Enoch, uh, was able to become a champion even though he had to sometimes do it alone. So you get inspired. Or take, for example, it talks about Noah. 
in chapter 11, verse 7, it says, it was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. Well, no one had, it had never rained before. So Mo, Noah was building an ark to get ready for rain and rain had never happened before. So guess what people were doing? People were mocking Noah, laughing at Noah. And many times when you're trying to be a champion, people will criticize you, ridicule you, minimize you, invalidate you, laugh at you. But when I look at Noah, he was a champion. And I say to myself, if God gave grace to Noah, to keep on enduring the laughter and the mockery of people, then God can do the same thing for me. Or take, for example, Abraham in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. Abraham, it says, it was by faith that Abraham obeyed, obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another country, land that God would give him as an inheritance. He went out without knowing where he was going. And it took Abraham 25 years to see the fulfillment of God's plan and purpose in his life. So whenever I think that my dreams are coming to fruition as quickly as I want them to do, I get inspired by Abraham. In other words, in order to keep on going as a champion, you have to learn from those who went before you and say, if God helped Abel, if God helped Enoch, if God helped Noah, if God helped Abraham, if God helped our ancestors, then the same God who helped them is the same God who will help me. Learn from those who went before you. Secondly, to be a champion, put this down. Not only learn from people who went before you, but lay beside the that what weighs you down down. Lay beside what weighs you down. Put it to the side. Uh, notice what he says again in verse 1. In verse 1, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 says, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a crowd, huge crowd of witnesses uh, to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down. Now, let me tell you something about a runner. If you've ever seen a runner, especially a sprinter, those runners will strip down almost to the level of because they want no extra weights. They want no extra weights. And what this writer is saying, if you've got some weights that are slowing you down, weights can be attitude, it can be your disposition, weights can even be people. It says, let us watch this strip off every weight. A weight is anything that hinders you from being what God has called you to be. Now, many times when we think about a weight, we think about uh, something bad. But listen to me. A weight sometimes is not what's bad, but it's just not what's best. It's not what's best. The weight is that which interferes with you being what God wants you to be. What's the test for weight? Listen very carefully. What's the test for weight? Anything that is interfering with you doing what God is calling you to do is a weight. And the writer says, lay aside every weight. Why does God want you to lay aside every weight? Because God is calling for you to be a champion. And we can become champions and get inspired when we learn from the champions of the past and say, you know what? If God rescued Daniel, God will rescue me. If God opened the Red Sea for Moses, God will open up a Red Sea for me. If God blessed those in the Montgomery boycott to keep on keeping on for almost for over a year until the buses were desegregated, then surely if I keep on keeping on, God will open up doors. Me. Learn from the past. Lay aside every weight. Anything that's interfering with you becoming what God has called you to be is a weight. Get rid of it because God is calling you, amen, to be a champion. You only have one life to live. It is moving fast. Only what you do for Christ will last. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. Help us to ask ourselves the honest question, what weight do I have to lay aside? Help us to be inspired by those who came before us, how they lived the life of faith and experienced victory. And since you are immutable, the same yesterday, today, and forever, as you help them, so, you will help, so shall you help us. We trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Thank you for being with me for another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, we'd like to invite you to consider becoming a part, a digital disciple here at St. Stephen Church. Contact us, newstart at ssclab.org. Regardless of where you are in the entire world, we invite you to become a part of our church. Look, we're glad that you joined us today. I hope that you're really thinking about how you're gonna live the rest of your life, living it as a champion, because God has not called you to be a chump. God has called you to be a champion. We'll pick up on this tomorrow, but until then, look, you have a great day the rest of the day, and don't forget during COVID-19 to stay safe, stay sane, and always remember God is in control. God bless you. See you tomorrow.